and welcome. You're watching Head to Head. I'm Carrie Olderman with UATV. Billions of dollars in investment projects, including most of these previously considered by the boards of foreign companies for Ukraine since February 2014, could go forward if the risk from the unresolved conflict in eastern Ukraine could be covered by political risk insurance. What is the importance of this insurance and how can it promote the Ukrainian economy. To discuss this, we are joined today in the studio by Bate Toms, chairman of the British Ukrainian Chamber of Commerce. Thank you for being with us today. Pleasure. Let's dive right in. Uh, a lot of our viewers might not be familiar with this concept at all. Do you want to give us a sh brief overview? Political risk insurance has been around for years. Uh, it's currently provided for almost every country affected by conflict. Um, it simply provides that if there's any loss because of conflict, uh, that'll be reimbursed. It's most effectively done by the Multilateral Investment Guarantee Agency of the World Bank. But the key point to understand about political risk insurance, and especially for a case like Ukraine, is that it's not here really to compensate because nobody expects conflict in Ukraine. The current conflict should be frozen. But it's to reinsure investors so that they can make investments so that boards don't have to worry about the conflict risk. Is it a matter of definition, then, when applying it to the Ukraine, of what is a conflict and what isn't a conflict? No, no. Uh, it's only a question of whether there's damage. As long as there's no damage, as long as there's no further conflict in Ukraine, the cost of political risk insurance for Ukraine is nothing. It's free, essentially. Countries simply need to give guarantees based on which MIGA, this World Bank organization, can give political risk insurance. Now, your organization has been talking that Ukraine is missing out on investments. Do you have any idea how much Ukraine is missing out by not having this political risk insurance? Night and day. Without political risk insurance, we're receiving, I'm told last year, about $2 billion. We should be receiving four, five, 20 times as much. Okay. Um, you're with the British Ukrainian Chamber of Commerce. Yes. What roles does the International Council of Business Association and organizations like your own play in this topic? We're here to facilitate business, to help people invest in the country, to bring people together. Okay, let's go into a little bit of the details of the MIGA, the MIGA. Um, there's a strict criteria for the level of risk that it's willing to accept. And MIGA political risk insurance is generally available only for smaller investments in the Ukraine. Um, how can this be changed, and what kind of work are you doing behind the scenes or people like yourselves? Well, the, um, currently, MIGA tends to only provide insurance when there is a conflict-free situation. Um, it does provide insurance for most conflict situations, but based on countries giving special guarantees, or in some cases funding, so that if there is a claim, it will be covered. It doesn't count against MIGA's own resources. So in the case of Ukraine, simply by providing guarantees, countries like the UK, Sweden, Canada uh, could set up a trust fund uh, that will allow MIGA to act as if there was no conflict at all. No. But the, the essential point is that it simply provides reassurance. Nobody expects the money will need to be drawn. It won't actually cost the international community anything, but it will hugely benefit Ukraine. What do you, you said about $2 billion we're missing out on? No. We currently have investment that is quantified as about $2 billion, but that counts a lot of things that normally wouldn't be counted. The level of true foreign investment in Ukraine is very small, maybe a half billion. It should be 10 or $20 billion. People forget that China, the United States, and most of the economies of this world were originally built on foreign investment. British foreign investment largely developed the United States. U.S. foreign investment largely developed China. It is essential for the Ukrainian economy and their standard of living here that we get greater foreign investment. Who are some of the big players for the Ukraine then? If you're mentioning the United States developed the Chinese economy, who is looking to develop the Ukraine economy? Are there any certain countries that? Well, to start with, I believe that there can be much greater British investment, especially in the IT sector. 
there can be much more substantial U.S. investment. I know the Chinese are looking to invest and the EU. Okay. Now, aside from you being a huge supporter of this, your involvement with the British-Ukrainian Chamber of Commerce, would you tell some of our international viewers exactly what you do here in Kiev and a little bit about your organization and maybe some of its recent accomplishments? Well, I've been here for just over 28 years as a lawyer. I was the first Western lawyer to set up an office here. I handled the first IPO, the first major investment uh, funded by the EBRD, the largest ever energy investment, which I actually initiated, the largest cross-border ag investment. And until recently, I'd won what was the biggest arbitration in the history of the country. But now there's a bigger arbitration over gas. Um, in terms of our chamber, I think we can point to several important successes. We organized the Black Sea Economic Forum in 2015. I think that's the biggest event ever done by a Chamber of Commerce in Ukraine. It resulted in changes to the land lease law in particular that protect all the farmers of this country. Uh, we also organized last year Ukrainian Week in London. We had over a thousand people. It's the biggest event ever held anywhere on Ukraine. And at that event, Lim Fox, the Secretary of State for Trade of the United Kingdom, announced that Ukraine would get priority treatment for a new UK-Ukraine trade treaty after Brexit. This can hugely develop the Ukrainian economy. Britain should be a major consumer for Ukraine's agriculture. Now, because of this relationship, when a British business gets in contact with you, what kind of questions do they have about coming to the Ukraine and what kind of advice do you give them? Well, questions usually relate to law and order. We can generally say that there have been huge improvements. We expect more, but that we feel that people can safely conduct business here. The most important thing for President Zelensky is to reassure people that corporate rating is a thing of the past, that people can invest and have their investments successfully uh, protected in the courts. Um, there's huge opportunity in Ukraine. The returns are actually quite good. The only thing keeping back investment is a vague insecurity about the conflict, which our initiative will cure. President Zelensky just spoke with business leaders last week, and he talked about bringing um, the ease of doing business in um, of Ukraine, their level, uh, I think they're at 90 right now, and he wanted to be in the top 10 of emerging countries within the next four years. Have any opinion about that? Yes, I was there. I was very pleased to hear him say that. Um, I think that's completely possible. Ukraine can transition faster than anyone imagines and has been transitioning faster than it's gotten credit for. So the country should have a fine future. And you're certainly the expert on transitions, having watched several of them in the last 28 years that you've lived <laughs> here in Ukraine. Things have, yeah, we've had our ups and downs, but in, in general, it's been a transition towards improvement. And I think that uh, sometimes people can look at a particular time period and think, well, we're not improving as fast as we should. But when you look back over any five or 10 year period in this country, the improvement has been enormous. And I think that improvement is going to accelerate. Let's hope you're right. Mr. Toms, thank you very much for joining us today. Unfortunately, that's all the time we have, but I'd love to have you back. That was Bate Toms, chairman of the British Ukrainian Chamber of Commerce. Thank you for watching the program and stay tuned for more with UATV.